What I'm going to show you now is the live loop section. And so these two icons are important here. This blue icon is what we're looking at. It's this session window here. And I can click that off and it disappears, right? And now we're given this whole new view. And then I can click it back on and it comes up on this half. So you can see this grid is this section and then this session kind of horizontal bars is this section. Typically it's just been this view. You kind of record tracks horizontally and you get your ideas out this way. The big update with um, this grid view, these live loops is where I'm going to show you now is you can record pieces of audio in these little squares that all are based around your tempo. Okay, so the question you might be asking is great, how do we actually get ideas with if we're just starting out with a blank template, right? To clean these things up, I'm going to delete these tracks. So I'm doing command backspace. These are regions on this track. There are regions on this track. Do you want to delete them? Yes, I do. Same thing with the grand. And now I have blank slate, okay? So I'm going to start with an audio track. I'm create. If you have an idea of a melody in your head, just go ahead and press in this square and, and you can record audio. So now we are recording audio in this square here because it's red, you can see it's recording. Um, you see nothing's happening on this side in our kind of traditional view, but we are actually just recording ideas in here and we can stop now we have that little snippet of audio in here and we can just go and record other pieces of audio in this section. This is the idea of live loops where you have one track with different ideas in, in these little squares. And then over time we can create multiple tracks with multiple different ideas and then we can pick and choose the ideas we like and then record them in to our traditional session view here. If that sounded like gibberish to you and everything, that's okay, we're gonna do it from scratch with a simple example. So let's just delete these. And let's start with a base of something, whether that's a piano prog progression that you record or a live loop, um, an actual Apple loop, sorry. So I'm gonna start with an Apple loop and I'm gonna open up our Apple loop section here. Um, I can press L, I believe L on my keyboard. Sorry, no, what's the shortcut for Apple Loops? I don't know, so I'm gonna press my question mark. And oh, it's O. So I'm gonna turn off the information bar and just press O. So this opens up the loop browser. I can also just go and click here. We don't have to be that lazy. I'm going to just X this orange thing to get back to a clean filter. And I'm gonna look for a guitar loop. And I'm gonna just scroll through here and search, you know, you can click and give it gives you highlights. I'm going to search for a um, guitar under guitars and I'm gonna do genre indie. And feel free to choose any of these, uh, any filter you want. And then if you know, okay, I wanna start a song that's a high tempo and it's more happy. So you might say, well, you might search for um, filter by tempo and then um, look for major keys because you want it to be more happy. Um, or you can also just filter all so scales uh, in the major key in a certain time signature, even if you know that. For our case, I'm, I'm open to happy, sad right now, so I'm just gonna do any. And then I'm going to just choose one of these. <laughs> Let's just go with this one. So you can click and drag to here. And let's actually just get into, let's remove that view, and just narrow in on this view. So if we play this, we hear that um, guitar loop now. What we can do now is add a drum track, let's say new software instrument drum track. Oops, sorry, new drummer track. Let's delete this software instrument by doing command backspace. And inside this drummer track, we can plus, and then we can just add the same similar thing that we were doing in the other view. We're gonna like just use the quadratic here, maybe turn up the hats. 
and then I'm gonna press play on my drum kit while that's happening. And that's going to come in at the next bar. So this is where tempo and key were really important. Tempo because we are locked in at uh, 120 right now. If that's too fast, let's just say 110. When you play the square, it doesn't come in right away. And this is because everything is locked into the beats and the tempo. So I'm in a 4-4, 110 tempo. So that means, I'll show you with the click on. So this loop here, when I play it, you can hear the, the tempo, right? You can hear the click. When I press the drums here, you see it came in right on the came in right on the first beat of the next bar, you would say. You can fill these squares up with different loop ideas, drums, synths, bass, guitars, vocals, you have little vocal ideas you want, and then just be clicking these around to see what works with one another. So let's add some more loops to give you an idea. Let's open up our loop browser again. So let's add some more, let's add a lead guitar, Let's just close down our editor by pressing E. Let's add the disco trance guitar. Let's add the disco trance lead guitar. And I'm bringing them all in at 110. You can just add this for fun to get some ideas. We'll also copy this bluebird, or we can just press plus on these. And I'm gonna double click and just edit this one to be a bit more loud and complex. I'm gonna add another one. This is, I'm gonna do super super simple and soft with claps. And another one here, loud and simple with a tambourine. Now I'm going to click some of these and see like this guitar here, does it work best with these, this one, this one, this one, or this one? Let's find out. That's cool. All right, let's try this one. Two, three, four, one. Two, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. Let's try this one. You can turn the guitar down because it's too loud right now. I want to hear the drums a bit better. Okay, let's try this one. And let's say, you know what, this drum is drum set is cool, but I kind of like this loop, let's say. See how the loops changed, but the drum set is just continuing. There, everything is disconnected in a way. Actually, not in a way, it's true, they are all disconnected. Everything is, is disconnected, but it's all matched up around tempo. Okay, so that's how we can kind of get ideas, right? We can add, a, let's add a bass guitar maybe. To get some ideas, we'll open up our library by pressing Y, and let's add a Liverpool bass. And I can actually arm this track. Let's make some more space here by pressing Y, snap the library, and O to snap the loop browser. And I have my keyboard here, so I have a bass guitar. And let's just press record and record something in. So let's. Um, we can also just get a vibe first by pressing these. Let's do, let's do this one. Cool. Let's try this drum set. And let's let's say I have an idea here. Let's just test it out. That's all I wanted to do. So now I've just created this little here with my my MIDI, this bass line. We can take a listen. If we just want to listen to uh, this one, we can stop them all at the bottom right here, pressing stop. And now I can just listen into the green one. The same idea as if we would record the MIDI in, in this zone here. We can still 
double click and open up an editor. This is the same editor. Everything is, is more or less the same. And we can go in and quantize our MIDI. We can add notes here. So let's say I want to quantize this. Command A, quantize by 1 16th. Let's see how it works with this drum kit. And then let's see how it works with this guitar. Not great. Let's see how it works with this guitar. Not great either. How about this one? That's the one we recorded on, so I think it sounds good. So those are in different keys. And so this is where it helps to have an idea of the key you want, because I kind of played this in, I think, like a C sharp, and this is totally in a different key, so it's not sounding right. But if you don't, if you still don't need to be in the same key. You can be using this kind of flexibility of clicking and choosing different, different groups and then seeing what feels good. We found these, so let's go with that. And because it's cool, what we're gonna do is record all of that into this right window here. And how we do that is by pressing R. You can kind of see the horizontal bars here and then it says R. So we're gonna press R and then we're gonna line up our cursor to where we wanna start things. And we'll just press record on our, on our keyboard. So, um, or press R, sorry. So I'm gonna press R and it's gonna come in on the right side here. So you can see it's being recorded. These loops are being recorded here. So let's say we like that as the intro and we like that as the verse. So you can see we have our structure at the top. Now, here's where it gets really cool. If I kept going, and then I click different little squares here, it would re actually start recording that in real time. Let's say maybe I didn't want the um, that lead at the pre. So what I can do is at this pre here is where I can just press stop on this square. So let's do that again. Delete that, bring our cursor back, record these intro and verse squares, and this is our guitar here in blue. I don't want, let's say I don't want that at the pre. So I'm gonna look at our tempo, I'm gonna press stop when it gets close. Three, four, one, two, three, four, stop. Okay, cool. So let's say at the chorus, I want it to come back in with this one, three. Okay, that doesn't sound good, but you get the idea. Let's say I bring back in this one here. Let's say in the verse two, I drop out the drums or I click on this drum kit. Now, so you get the idea. You can quickly record in actual tracks here in our traditional view with the ideas we have in our little live loops view here. And when you're doing this, um, I like to do this kind of cutting things out, dropping things back in when I have the right, my uh, ideas that I like. So I've, I might have multiple tracks here and I have multiple different squares of ideas. And then I'll highlight the ideas I like in a certain color. Let's say, you know, we can, we can choose different colors here by opening up option C. And you know, we can change, let's say all the colors in dark blue are my ideas I really like. And then I would come into this view and record all the ideas I really like in their appropriate sections. We can also copy and paste that baseline and open these up, double click, and just do some edits. Maybe, maybe that's another baseline we have, an idea. And now we have this baseline, which is different than this one. And we can go in and edit these ones as well. That's the power of live loops. And then once you have the right ideas, get them into your traditional view and then start working on the song structure again. The next big thing that Logic did with their new update 10.5.1 was add the step sequencer. And this is really helpful. I use the step sequencer a lot for making drum beats, but you can do it for 
any instrument, any software instrument available. It's a new interface to make melodies. So maybe you're not... Uh...